Here's what you missed on WSBA's Morning News with Gary Sutton. Good morning, Joe. How are you? I'm good, man. What's up? Uh, lots of things going on. Uh, first of all, what's on your mind today? Have you gotten anything that uh, you've been kind of looking at? You read a lot, I know, and, and you're always looking at different things that are happening. So anything up front this morning other than the uh, the Penguins over the weekend? Hmm. Let me give you something, because um, it kind of comes right up your alley. You're a guy that's dealt with guns most of your life. I, I read where uh, armed teachers have become a reality now in Georgia, a place called Lawrence County, Georgia, where the teachers are now going to be allowed to have guns. And in the classroom, there's been, you know, the sheriff's department's been working uh, pros and cons on both sides here. The one guy uh, of the sheriff's department said, I don't grade tests and teachers shouldn't carry guns. So you get a little idea that they're not terribly thrilled by this. And yet there's a whole lot of other people that want teachers in the light of 13 shootings so far this year to be able to carry guns. What's your take on all that? Um, You know, I'm kind of... I'm a very pro Second Amendment. I don't. I don't even believe in concealed carry permits. Um, I mean, I have one in this state, but I don't. I think it's wrong that I have to have one. Um, I think the Second Amendment says you can have a gun. Well, why do I have to have a permit then to stick it under my jacket? Like, should I just like carry it in my hand and walk around with it? That, that seems kind of stupid, also. Um, so, you know, I, that's kind of my my base philosophy. Should teachers carry guns? I think. You know, that's a very mixed bag. I think a lot of that depends on are we willing to tolerate a wrongful shooting? Hmm. Um, yeah. And and I know on the left it's like, no, no, you know, any child that gets that, that's, that's just heinous and wrong. I, I, I don't think – I think the left only deals with large numbers of people. They don't deal with individuals. I think the right deals with individuals and not large numbers of people. But hmm. so as a, as a kind of a, a basic right-wing guy, I'm like, yeah, I mean, if the teacher wants to carry you – know, when I worked at Millersville – I I had one on most of the time. Yeah. Um, of course, I was in uniform, and I I don't you know I don't I don't think anybody saw it. But on the other hand, you know if they did, I really didn't care. Um, so you know, there's that. Uh, but that's a college level thing. So you know, you're talking about little kids. Right. Um, we want to protect our kids. Uh, I think you know carrying a gun is not the same as being willing to shoot someone. Um, you know, we carry it for self-defense. Well, now you've expanded that to defense of others. Uh, that's why the teachers carry it, not necessarily defend themselves, defend the kids. Okay, well, I don't have a problem with that either, but it's a very different mindset. What about the okay. training? I mean, obviously well, that, there has to be some yeah, training involved, right? This is going, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, discriminating shooting, you know, when to shoot, when not to shoot. Um, you know, How to, how to shoot? To draw. And the other thing is, and this is where most concealed carry people screw up, is, uh, yeah, you may be able to get on the range and, and drill, you know, X, you know, the X ring every time. Uh, but if you don't practice your draw, and sight and squeeze, which under pressure ends up being a very different animal. Uh, if you don't practice, you know, God forbid it should come to this, but if you don't practice your reloads, um, you know, all these all these are the things that kid, get, get people killed in a gunfight. And now, you know, here's the other thing, um, and this to me is not a showstopper. It's simply a, another factor in the tactical situation. You know, if you're a school shooter and you're coming into a school where you know teachers are armed, what does that do? What does that change for you? Yeah. Um, now, I, I don't think that's a reason that I'd like, like most people that know me know I'm coming into a situation with a gun. <laughs> um, I, I've never drawn one and, you know, that, that I wasn't in uniform, but, um, I, I've come close a couple times. Mm -hmm. Um, but, um, you know, I, I just think it's a, I think it's a very mixed bag. I think the teachers that want to, Hey, why not? You know, no, nothing else has worked. Right. I mean, gun, gun control doesn't work. Gun control legislation is a myth. The, the common sense gun control, I hate that term because I think we already have common sense gun control, and anything above that is not common sense gun control. Um, you know, common sense gun control to, uh, to, to the political left is there shouldn't be any. Common sense gun control to the right is, you know, everybody should have one or that two or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Uh, you know, so forget that phrase. It's 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 meaningless. Well, um, and, and common sense gun control, too, Joe, is, is simply this. Okay, the law says I have to be responsible with a gun. Okay, the, you know, the, basically right. I, I'm supposed to be responsible with a gun. Every every time I have someone call, they say I have a gun. I say, how many people you shot? And they'll go, well, none. Right. I said, why not? Well, it's against the law. 
And and so because the, you the, can't get tags, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, tags. Thank you. Had a little cold, but uh, yeah, I like that. You know, the idea is that that people know they they know that the rights yeah. comes with responsibility, and that's you know, that's common sense gun that, control. Yeah, the the knowing that that people. I mean, it's it, the, the the deterrence of knowing that that someone is going to to defend themselves or make things difficult for you has been long proven. Um, it, to, to be a deterrent, you know, in Washington, D.C., when they had uh, the you can't own a firearm in the city kind of thing, you know, what criminals used to do is burglars used to do is they would call the police, you know, and, and have them raid the house. They, they, would, they would say, oh, there's guns in this house, you know, and, and after the police left, then they would go in and burglarize the house. Right. Um, that was a very common tactic in in Washington, D.C. for a number of years until um, the Supreme Court struck down that uh, ridiculous rule. Um, and now it's not a common tactic. Um you know, people like to point to places like Australia and the UK. Well, they don't have gun violence. Well, that's true, but you know, all that did was, I mean, the, their violent crime hasn't statistically changed um, up or down. Um, it's just the weapons of choice have changed. So, so what does that mean? Well, right. that means the people that are bound and determined to commit violence are bound and determined to commit violence, however they do it. We're talking about guns this morning with Major Joe Decree, and uh, of course, he's retired, but uh, doesn't retire the. Uh insignia there in front of his name. But I was just reading an article here, Joe. Uh, <laughs> gun owners are apparently pulling the sanctuary uh, deal right now. There are several rural Illinois counties, five of them to be exact, who recently passed resolutions declaring themselves sanctuary counties for gun owners, a reference to so-called sanctuary cities like Chicago that don't cooperate with aspects of federal immigration enforcement. And the resolutions are meant to put the Democratic-controlled Legislature on notice that it passes a host of gun bills, including new age restrictions for certain weapons, a bump stock ban and size limit for gun magazines. The counties might bar their employees from enforcing the new laws. That sanctuary has become, become quite a buzzword, hasn't it? I, uh, you know, I, I enjoy the irony. I think it's fun. Right. And that's <laughs> that's basically what it is. Speaking of sanctuary, I see out in California that a lot of uh, the counties, the municipalities and so forth are starting to kind of say, hey, we're not in favor of sanctuary anymore. We're in favor of uh, getting back to uh, abiding by our laws. I thought that was kind of a healthy thing to hear. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's kind of funny. I think nationwide you're starting to see um, lots of pockets like, you know, Illinois and, you know, some California people are, are starting to be heard. I'm not sure that they'll get very far in California. Frankly, I wish they'd hurry up and, and you know, declare themselves <laughs> an independent nation. I will help them pack. Um but I, I think that you're starting to see a lot of this kind of thing. It is pretty interesting. We've got Louisa from Dillsburg on the line for you, so she has a question for you. Louisa, go ahead. Uh, good morning, Gary. And I have to say, Major Dupree, he always has a voice of reason. He always seems to sensibly think things out. I I want to know what he thought of mostly about if they allow the teachers and the professors to carry a gun now this won't pertain to the elementary but don't you think it's not going to be long before the the teenagers that hunt you know in the in the high schools and the, the college age kids are going to say we want our right to have a gun too hmm. interesting question louisa we'll give it to major decree go ahead joe yes that will happen yeah um, and thanks for the accolades, yeah. uh, Louise. I really appreciate it. Right. I'm not sure my wife would agree with you on all that, but. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, but, but you know, you get down to that point. Yeah, I that's think going to happen, and I I don't know what the answer to uh, to that is. Um, do you let kids carry guns in schools? I think that's a bad idea. Um, but yeah, that's probably going to come up. Well, we're because talking about if, we're if talking our about. Teachers doesn't stop it. Yeah. Good. I wrote a uh, I wrote a paper one time when I was still teaching. I, I had to write this paper for my master's degree and. Uh, and one of the things it was about was about school law versus, you know, the, your protections uh, under the Constitution. And, and the point that it made that school law is many times very different. And the idea that we give people responsibility before they really learn what that is uh, maybe isn't the greatest thing. You know, if we have like hunter safety courses and things like that where, you know, we're teaching kids how to responsibly do that kind of stuff, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm there. But but the point is this idea of making it, you know, giving giving those who have, are still learning about responsibility the same responsibility as you give to someone who allegedly is supposed to have learned responsibility, i.e., an adult. Uh, I'm not sure I go along with that at all. Yeah, well, I I will do you one better. I don't like the way we do school either. Uh, like like not at all. Um, I think that um, the very structure of school is discriminatory, and I think that we. 
we assume a whole lot about kids. And, you know, we make kids do things in school that you would never put up with. Like, you know, if, if you had to ask your boss, like, when to go to the bathroom and when to eat, um, that's a grievance. If you're a union guy, you're going you're gonna to do very well with that kind of complaint. <laughs> and yet that's school. Yeah. And, oh, well, we have to keep them under control. Well, yes, there is a certain aspect of that. But, uh, you know, why do, we, why do we make kids who, I mean, you know, there's <laughs> the medical science on teenagers and sleep is, is pretty definitive. They need a lot more than most people. Why do we make them get up at 5 and 6 in the morning to go to school? <laughs> why don't we just let them go to school at 9 o'clock? Yeah. Like everybody going to work. <laughs> the only thing I would say um, to you on the, fr- on the first point, would be and having been through, having had to go through that for twenty five years was that you know uh, if there were anything like a lot of us were you learn how to con in school you learn how to uh, you know get by things sometimes and you know the idea of just getting up and going to the bathroom and coming back well you, you'd, everybody would be doing that during of course maybe a bad yeah. lecture but yeah uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah so I mean yeah, I, I, I hear you yeah so I go I go back to my original point when you're learning responsibility I'm not going to give it all to you at one time. You know, the idea of keeping a little bit of order is still kind of, to me, would have been still paramount, although I haven't taught now in like 20 years. But uh, Well, and then going back to, you know, the, the current gun control issue, you know, you've got these kids in Florida, and, and these are people whose frontal lobes are still buffering, and yet we want to, what, turn over the reins of national policy? <laughs> like, I, I don't. I don't have a problem that Dick Sporting Goods wants to restrict their sales and and not sell certain items. I mean, they're they're a private enterprise business. Sure. They can do they can do that. You know, I don't. You know, what, will I support Dick's? Um, well, we don't have them out here, uh, so, I, yeah. so no. But you know, I I don't I don't really have a problem with that. That's a company. Well, and if you have that based on what a bunch of teens say. Right. Well, I mean, what they, you know, really? They're yeah. Like like what. Are they doing the rest of your marketing? Um, do they do your HR policy? Uh, you know, and and for for uh, well, but for again, politicians, yeah, you do, you I just, just think it's stupid. Yeah, the idea is right, many politicians are using them and manipulating them to do what they oh, want yeah. them to do in a certain it, moment. And hey, that's uh, all the time we have today. I apologize. I could talk to you forever. You know that, but uh, unfortunately, <laughs> we'll save a little bit of it till next Monday morning. Thank you, my Bye, friend. Brother. I appreciate it. Have a great week. Bye. Take care. Major Joe Decree with us here on WSBA Morning News. Keeping you in the know. WSBA's Morning News with Gary Sutton. Weekdays 6 to 9 on News Talk 93.9 and 910 WSBA.